Now, what if I told you that there are many secret things about grass that people don't tell you about? Huh? Like for example, do you know that they are a one-plant cloning machine? Well, let's find out about that in our little red jungle. Wow, look, now you have so many plants and animals. <laughs> okay, so I've got a confession to make. You know, usually when people ask me what's my favourite thing about nature, they would expect some cool animal. But to be honest, I've been secretly fascinated and intrigued by grasses and weeds. So today, I'm going to try to convert all of you into grass lovers, or at least try to teach you something cool about them. So if you're ready, let's go. Whoop. <laughs> okay, so this isn't just grass because grass isn't even a species, right? So grass is actually an umbrella term for a whole family of plants called poesiae. And this includes more than 10 thousand distinct species, including the largest grass of them all, the bamboo. Yeah, bamboos are a type of grass and the largest species of grass in the world is the giant bamboo. And we know they are related because of their genetics, but even just by their appearance, you can see some similarities. So like for example, their stems are hollow, just like your regular turf grass, and their leaves also alternate. And all of these features hold true for all the other grasses that you eat as well, including your rice, your wheat, your barley, and your sugar cane. Yeah, they are all different species of grasses. So the wheat, barley, or rice that we eat are actually the seeds of their respective species of grass. Okay, and I mean, even by looking at the seeds of this common grass over here, you can see the resemblance. And it looks exactly the same as the bamboo's seeds. But don't bother trying to grow your own field of rice crops from your store-bought white rice because it won't work. Your white rice grains are processed and have been shaved off, so they're not even functioning seeds anymore. But maybe those expensive organic brown rice might work, you know, if you know the right ways to germinate it. Uh, but don't quote me on it if it doesn't work out. Okay, bye. <sighs> okay. However, since we're on the topic of growing your own rice plants, grasses actually have two ways of reproducing. And the first one is of course through your seeds. And they clearly produce many seeds just from one stalk. But that's not the only reason why grass is everywhere. Because grass can also clone themselves. Okay, it's more so a form of vegetative or asexual reproduction. And it happens because of this. Now this here is a stolon and you can actually see them you know, growing along the sidewalks and trying to grow on top of the road. And they are basically a creeping stem. And by creeping, I mean trying to grow across the ground, huh? not like some of you ticopes out there. Huh? But if you look really closely, you can see that there are roots growing out from each of the segments of the stolon with new leaves growing out too. And these are actually the clothes of the parent grass plant. Now the interesting thing is, once each of these roots have set into the ground, right, even if you cut the stolon off here like that, each of these daughter clones are already a functioning plant on its own already. So you know, they can just survive as it is. But that's just what's happening above the ground. Some grass species do the same cloning thing, but underground. And those shoots are called rhizomes instead. But they work pretty much the same way. And that's why there's so much grass everywhere and they keep coming back and they keep growing and growing and growing and there will never be an end to grass. Now, stolons and rhizomes are not exclusive to grasses and actually a lot of other plants use this trick too, like your strawberries. But why do plants go out of their way to reproduce in two different ways? Why can't they just stick to one method? Well, simply put, reproducing through cloning and seeds bring about major benefits to the plant. So if you look at cloning, right, it happens much faster and you actually get to pass down your good traits to your offspring. But what you're forgetting is that you're also passing down your bad traits. Okay, so you imagine ah, if all your clones have that one trait of being vulnerable to the cold weather, then one time monsoon season come, what do you think will happen? All of these grass plants will die. So seeds, which can only get by fertilization and mixing the cells from two parent plants together, it actually helps to diversify the gene pool. And that's why plants like grass, they use both of these methods. And I'm pretty thankful that they are such hardy and flexible plants because grasses really are one of the world's most important plants. 
On top of producing rice and wheat and bamboo, all the grass around you are actually food for grazing animals like your cows, your sheep, your horses and your rabbits. And these animals either affect us humans directly or they are part of a much larger food web in nature. And not only that, but the roots from all your grasses and their stolons and rhizomes, they hold the soil together and prevent erosion. They also enrich the soil by adding organic minerals into it. And so, okay, I'm pretty sure the government will love me for this, but this is why we should support grassroots activities. Mm, okay, or at least I hope this video has helped you appreciate the often overlooked grass that are all just growing under your HDB. And this marks the end of this episode, but before we go, I would like to give a shout out to all our patrons. Mrs. Chu, Mr. Chu, Sportman, Sky Baby, Ingle, HR Queen, Ping Hu Master, Just Juice Gel, Block Tango, Amaldillo, Neko Sama, Uncle Sam, Amelia, Crooked Spider, Low Eli, Big Three Circles, Amy, Nero and Angel, and Emmy. Okay, I tried to do that in one breath. But uh, yeah, thank you for supporting this channel directly. And if you would like to do the same, you can find the link to my Patreon down in the description below. Do follow me on all my other social media platforms as well and subscribe to watch more videos of our local ecology. Thanks again for watching and remember, keep your eyes peeled because it is a jungle full of grass out there. Oh.